Hello and welcome to a brand new little project that I put together for you. I made a snell. This is a polymer clay time lapse sculpting demonstration. I made a snell using a real shell and polymer clay. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I did it. I know this video is a tad bit long, but I didn't want to break it up into several videos. I wanted everything under one roof so you can have it all right now. And I'm pretty sure, you know, it'll just fly right by without you even noticing. So without any further ado, let's get started. For this, I'll be using this real shell and some Sculpey Primo. I chose this shell mainly because of the, the style of it, but I got it from Hobby Lobby and it was $1.99. Another good reason was it was really sturdy, really thick right here on the edge, which made it strong. This other shell is really nice looking, but it's paper thin on the edge, and I didn't want to break it from all the rough housing I'm going to be doing, you know, trying to make this thing. The Sculpey Primo is translucent. It's an 8 ounce pack, I do believe. It says translucent on the back. I'm going to be using disc clay, and it's going to be solid, solid clay. And I'm cutting off quite a bit, I guess. It's a pretty big shell. So I want to make sure the animal that fills it belongs there, that he's not just renting, you know what I mean? When you're done with these packs of clay like this, you can just fold it over and tape it. It kind of works, you know, for a real quick method of keeping your stuff clean. So then I just take the clay and I condition it in my hands and get it nice and loose and get all the particles in it, you know, worked up and ready and I roll it into a ball and then I roll that ball into kind of like a snake or a sausage shape that's tapered a little on one end and a little more on the other and right there I got some trash on it and I just cut it away some of y'all think that I never get trash on my stuff but it happens you, know, you just clean it as you go try to keep your area clean it's something you have to do so now I'm just going to take this and kind of press down, pinch it down. I don't, I'm towards the, my thumb tips. I'm trying not to, I'm trying to leave that high and kind of put an angle on it, I guess, and flatten it out a little bit. I leave the bottom of it alone and the top kind of make it more like a spoon, I guess. This is going to be the foot of this this animal. See, it gives me a little space right here. And if you can see from the side how it looks, it give you an idea of what I'm going to have to do to try to make this seem like it you know, belongs there. To do that, I'm just going to press down and wiggle it. That'll cut down into that clay and leave an impression up in the front and up in the back where the shell has you know came in contact with it. Then I take this little piece of clay and roll out a tiny snake. Then I put that in the front part where that shell came in contact. Kind of work it on there. Then I take my shell and I put it back on there, press down, and get my guide back, basically. I don't know if you noticed, but I kind of made it to where that clay is on the inside of the shell. I kind of wanted to make it to where it was... It, it, it's form-fitting all the way around, but it kind of goes up inside it a little bit, like to where this shell will seat on it, sit on it. I don't know if you can say that that way. Where it, it, the sitting is better, it sits on it better. See, the, the, the bottom of the shell is a unique shape, and the, the clay that I rolled out is just basically a, a sausage. So I have to build this out to where it meets, they, they, both meat, both part, you know, both pieces of material meat, and it's completely sealed in. If you see right here, I'm gonna put the shell back on there. I changed the angle so you can see down up underneath there, pretty good. And I rolled out another little tiny snake that's tapered on both ends, and I'm just kind of push it on there with my dotting tool, and make sure it's really roughed on there, pretty good. And when I take this off, it gives me a guide where where that needs to be. The clay 
needs to be there. So I build out up underneath it. I add little pieces of clay. I'm trying not to disturb that guide though, that piece that I just put down. And after every little part that I do, I keep putting this back on there and repositioning it. Um, this is because I don't want it to, the clay to build up too much and then I'll try to force it down there. You know, it, it'll crack it or whatever, crack that shell. So now I'm just turning it around. I'm going to do the same thing on the back side. I eventually do take that sticker off. I'm pretty sure of it. I should have took it off right away because it started coming off, you know, the print onto the clay and stuff. But I did the same thing there. I rolled out a tiny snake and then I rolled out an additional one and put it up underneath to help with flow. To help it flow. Pulled it back off. Now you can see this weird thing that I got going on here. It's no longer just a sausage. It's it's like larger. Now I'm rolling out a little bit of clay, really thin, and I'm brushing on some Sculpey clay softener to make it nice and sticky, the body of that snail, the front of it. That's like the front where the head's going to be. Now this is a little trick that I like to do. Basically what I did is I, I took a shortcut. I just erased all my tool work and fingerprints and everything by getting that real tacky and putting a real thin sheet of clay on there that's flat, putting it, you know, and then working it too, cutting it off. It gives you this brand new, super ultra clean looking, you know, shape. This is this is my main thing how I work with this with this clay basically. I do it for everything. See when I cut that away, it really makes it look clean and finished. Then I position it back on there, the shell. And one little piece that I had missed. I'm gonna fix that and put that on there. Smooth it smooth it on and get it all nice and pretty looking. See, I'm going to be texturing this later on in this video. You can see how it looks now. When I pull this shell off, it doesn't look like much. But when I put it back on here, because everything comes together, it looks like it's a part of this. You know, it's starting to look like a snail. Now I just roll out two additional little snakes that I'm going to put on the sides of this and attach it using this stylus tool. Same with the other side. But I'm not attaching it all the way down. I'm leaving it off of the the neck area. Uh, I'm going to attach it later. This, that's just to give it a little more character and a little something a little of a little more interest than around uh you know a log after getting these attached and everything is all cleaned up i move on to attaching the rest of those tiny snakes to the neck but first to get the neck up off this marble i gently work it back and forth and all around taking care not to force the clay too much until it's in the upright position. Okay, I decided that the the neck wasn't long enough and what I did is I just took a thick piece of clay and squished it into it like a flat disc, still kind of thick, and I just bent it over onto that, kind of like a mushroom. This way it's attached really well. And that kind of extended the neck out a little bit. Now I'm rolling out two more snakes that are tapered on one end, you know, from fat to tapered, and I'm setting them in the front of this snail, the larger end facing down. Here's a closer scene of me using this stylus tool to kind of like tool them onto the neck. I probably should have used something a little bit different, I think, than, than that. 
and then I add two more little round uh, just pieces of clay that were squished flat. This kind of gives the, the head area a little more interest. And if you look and see what I'm doing right here with this palette tool, I'm gently pressing down everywhere except the very end of this little tiny snake. What happens is it makes a bulbous area at the end where the tool's not touching. And it's a neat little trick for this, I guess. I don't know how often you need to make antennas for, for insects, but if you just roll your palette knife at the end of it, and you know don't touch the end it makes it's a pretty little trick okay now I'm just filling in the little gap where these two parts meet with just some just a little tiny snake I guess and I'm compressing it in there with the stylus tool and I'm running the tool up and down forcing the clay to the right and then to the left kinda like just get the excess off of there. All I wanted to do is fill in that void. Okay, now for this next part, we're going to make a mouth for this snail. Um, originally, I did a Google search on snail images, and what I tend to do is just pick the one that I like the most, or the one that will favor what I'm trying to do the easiest, you know, whatever, and I'll go with that. And the problem was, on this image, there was no mouth. And I didn't really even see a mouth on the rest of the page. There was like, none of the snails had mouths. So I just assumed that it didn't have one. And I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to make a mouth for this thing. I'm going to invent one. And I did. And I later on did another Google search. And it, it turns out that snails do have a mouth. And it's not too far from where I put this one. It's underneath the face. Um, not, you know, not too far from the tentacles that, that stick out. But anyhow, that was just a mishap from doing some poor, you know, referencing, searching for images and stuff that I needed. Referencing is very important, and I have a habit of not doing it well enough. You should have plenty of pictures of whatever it is you're, whatever you're, you're sculpting. If you're making a, you know, muscles, you should have a lot of men's health magazines and whatnot. But in the end, I either way, if it, if a snail does have a mouth, if it doesn't. I really like how this one turned out and you know it makes sense just looking at it things don't have to be 100 percent accurate anyways that's that's the fun with art now for the fun part we're going to do some texturing on this snail texturing is a little bit tricky the main part of texturing is well the hardest part I guess would be trying to do skin direction and believability. Um, fortunately, it's, this is just a snail and there's really no, no significant skin direction on it. So I'm kind of like skating by with this. There's really no way to mess this up. But to texture it, I start off by just using this dentist pick. Now as far as tools go, you can use a toothpick, you could use anything really. Just whatever feels comfortable for you. Um, but I, I'm cutting into the clay which kind of makes a little bit of debris come off of it. That's one way you can got, you can cut into the clay. Um, another way is to actually score the clay, like pressing down on it and dragging the tool across it. I switched to doing that because it was making a lot of mess. But the idea here is to cross hatch and get all your texturing how, how you want it. Well, you get it started anyways. And then once you get a, a good area, you know, all scratched up, you come back with that Sculpey clay softener. Well first I I brush all the debris away with a dry brush because it'll just get stuck on there after I'm you know put the stuff on there. This is Sculpey clay softener. And I just use a nylon brush and absorb it onto the brush and gently work it onto this area that I textured. Now what happens is the clay softener kind of breaks the clay down a little bit, makes it it loosens it up. And if you do this just right, or enough, you can totally make it look like those are not tool marks, but it is just, you know, skin texture. So after you're done doing that, you, you get it all brushed out. What you do is you come back with your tool 
and do some more scratching in areas that need, that, you know, that are too washed out or that might need it. Here's a nice close up for you where I'm doing both of these functions that you can see. Some of the scenes in this video are just absolutely amazing. But you see right here how I just, I'm coming back and I'm adding these lines and I'm kind of being consistent with everything. This is all there is to it when it comes to skin texture. But like I said, this is just a snail. It's not nothing very critical. So I can't really mess this up. Texture, texturing is not my greatest thing anyways. The same thing applies for the head and the face area. I just use the same tool and I'm being very, very gentle with it. I even hold the bottom of the little tentacles with my finger and kind of detail down them a little bit, as you can see in this image. This is an even better close up. Now I'm doing some more. This is the other side. I only did a little bit of this the texturing because it took a lot and it was just too much to be filming. Well guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you for taking the time to watch this. I know it's been a while since I made a video. Sorry for taking so long doing this video. I I suppose I was just, you know, I'm making a snail so I was just staying in character. Um, yeah, I don't know if you're gonna buy that or not, but I, it was the holidays and stuff, and I noticed a pattern, I don't move very quickly during those times. But anyways, we got that over with, it's the new year, looking forward to the new year, and looking forward to hearing from you guys, I miss you, and really appreciate you for, you know, taking the time to watch this. So until next time, I will see you here again soon. Thank you so much for watching.